All right, to finish up lesson six, uh, let's do this practice at the bottom here for inverse relationships. And we're going to mix it up a little bit, inverse and direct. So use the constant of variation to solve for direct and inverse variation problems. So we're first going to find k like we've been doing. And then um, if you have a flashcard type of thing, divide is how you um, divide for directly and multiply for inversely. Then, then use K for the new situation. Okay, so these are always going to be a two-step problem. For more practices, go to the book to these pages we're not covering and um, various jointly problems. So all the other problems are in there. There's lots of examples. Just stay away from those because we're not doing those. All right, number one, the stopping distance of a car after it breaks um, after the brakes have been applied, varies directly with the square of the speed of the car. All right, so the stopping distance, distance, D. Okay, the square of the speed, S. Uh, ooh, you know what? Look, look, look right there. They actually gave you a letter R to use for the speed. So be careful, you know, be on the lookout for that. So very directly, directly divide the first thing, D, over the second thing, speed R, and it's squared. That's going to equal K. So then it tells me that it's traveling at 60 miles per hour. That's a speed and can stop at 200 feet. That's a distance. Find k. Words of operation say square the 61st, which is 3600. Put that in your calculator and you're going to get 118th. That's k. That is not the answer to the problem. That's k. Okay. So what we're going to do is take the new information it stops in 72 feet. That's a distance. Distance goes on the top. Um, how fast can it go means I don't know what R is. And K is 1 over 18. Okay. This is where... Let's, um, we're going to cross multiply. So this right here is going to be 72 times 18. That's going to equal 1296. Okay, so it's going to be 1296 um, equals r squared. So how do you do that? Well, so r squared, that's, we take the square root of the other side, and I'm out of room. Um, here, let's write it down here, 1296, square root of 1296, do I understand that little move here? That's a square, so to get rid of it, we're going to work on these in the next chapter a lot more, but for right now, if you have a square, what you want to do is square root both sides, okay, and um, when you take the square root of 1296, you get 36 miles per hour, which is this speed. Okay. Um, let's see if I can do the next one on a piece of paper here. The time required to do a job varies inversely with the number of people working on it. Well, that sounds reasonable. Um, the time required to do a job varies inversely with the number of people. So varies inversely that means we're multiplying something okay multiplying something multiplying the variables what are the variables the time required to do the job and it's in hours and varies inversely with the number of people working on it okay 
varies inversely. That means it's going to be t times p equals k. And then it tells you it takes five hours for seven bricklayers to do a particular job. So k equals 35. All right. Then it's going to say, how long will 10 bricklayers? Well, the 10 bricklayers is a new p. Oops, equals 10. OK, so that means, and it says, how long will it take? So t is the unknown. 10 is the new situation. And k will always be constant for the problem. So we had 35. OK, so how do you solve? It might be easier if you want to look at this as 10t equals 35. So we reduce by 10, and you get t equals 3.5, or 3.5 hours, is the answer to the problem. Okay? It takes 7 bricklayers 5 hours to do it, so it makes sense that it takes 10 less time. Right? They're inverse relationships. If P goes up to 10, then 5 has to go down to 3.5. Okay? So that was number 2. Um, let's see a different color. Number 3 says electrical current in amperes and varies directly. Varies directly. Divide when there's very directly by voltage. That's going to be K. Okay, then it says 15 volts. So the volts went on the bottom and 5 amperes. Okay, um, that reduces to a one third, right? Divide by 5. That's one third. That's K. All right, then the new situation is they tell you that the volts are now 18. Because of the inverse relationship, what happens to A if V goes up? If they're in there together, that means A has to go up too. Okay, so 18, constant is one third, and I don't know what A is. Cross multiply. That's going to be 18 equals 3a, or 3a equals 18, whichever you want to do. That means a equals 6. a equals 6 when v equals 18. Okay, 6 amps. All right.